What criteria do you use to judge whether you like a movie? Or a novel for that matter. We all have our standards, you know, whether it's dramatic enough, whether we can get into the characters, whether the characters seem plausible or believable. Our society preaches that the character should always have some eccentricity. Notice that they always display something eccentric early in the film if they want you to identify with the character. I, I like all of those criteria and they are all important to me, especially storytelling, consistency of the plot, but there's one that I never hear mentioned, so I'm going to talk about that, and that is civilization. It, it's the context within which we all live. It's what we depend upon for our food, for the electricity, for the livelihood that enables us to be able to buy movie tickets, and for all the systems of technology and finance that enable the director to make the film. So why is civilization almost never a topic, never a character in our films? Well, it sounds awfully abstract, very highbrow, but it's not, because if you have your central characters, they are part of a big mesh that we've built. And that mesh is important to the plot. Because what would you do if you suddenly were in trouble? Well, you'd pick up the phone and dial 911, and you'd expect skilled professionals to come to your aid quickly and complain if they didn't. And the director of the movie that director would complain if she didn't get instant help from skilled professionals that were paid by her tax dollars. What happens in movies, though? Civilization almost never works. And the fundamental reason is the idiot plot, the notion that you have to get your hero into pulse-pounding jeopardy right away, peril. And that kind of gets messed up if skilled professionals jump in and say, oh, that was really cool what you did in scene one, Mr. Citizen. Now step aside, we'll take over from here. What you want to have happen in real life is death to a movie plot. And so you have to come up with some way of preventing 911 from ruining it all. All right, that's a given, that's fine. But how do they do that? There are examples of directors doing this right. But I'm going to start with the ones that do it wrong, that do it in a harmful way, and that is those that simply write off civilization from the start. They say, here's our film situation, and there is no civilization. That makes it easy to keep my heroes in peril. No, mind you, I've done that too. And there are some examples like Oblivion, Elysium, the Riddick stories, the Falling Skies, these are all situations in which, okay, we're imagining that civilization isn't there and having fun. Great, that's fine. But learn to recognize this and recognize that the storyteller has it easy when they do it that way. Or even worse, these, these dystopias, these apocalyptic dystopias, that posit civilizations that are stupid beyond comprehension, that make decisions that are the same again and again and again, scarecrows, so that the heroes have something to oppose. The Hunger Games, Divergent, Giver, they all go with this notion that your society would oppressively try to stop human beings from being human. And therefore, wow, you have an adventure. Now, some, some uh, films try a little bit harder. They say, okay, there's some civilization going on, but just enough to provide a backdrop or a, a platform from which our characters can have an adventure. Armageddon. There's a skilled civilization, all right. There's NASA and all that, but its sole purpose is to get Bruce Willis's team of uh, roughnecks to, to the uh, comet so that they can do their individualistic little team adventure. Pacific Rim, the purpose of the advanced civilization is to make giant robots so the individual characters can fight. Okay, fun. 
The biggest example of this sliding scale is Independence Day. And the sliding scale is the more badass the villains, the more competent civilization is allowed to be in order to provide a platform for the heroes. And in Independence Day, the aliens are so badass that the United States government and military are allowed to be simultaneously competent and good. That's some badass villain. Same is true in Batman movies, where because the villains are so competent, the police are allowed to be a little competent. Now there's another category, and that's restoring civilization. I like that. I wrote one called The Postman. What if our darkest nightmares come true and civilization collapses? The complaint I always had about the Mad Max movies is that you simply assume that after civilization is gone, everybody is going to be so busy survi surviving and or having a great time growing mohawks that nobody even thinks about it anymore. But in The Postman, I posit that just after survival for their children and getting enough to eat, people would be thinking, how can I get all that good stuff back? The stuff I took for granted when I went and watched movies. The stuff we all took for granted. How could we get it back? And this is the theme not only in The Postman, but also in, say, Battlestar Galactica, or the TV series Defiance. There is another category, and that is those filmmakers who oppose civilization, who detest civilization, who preach relentlessly that it's impossible, that it's hopeless. They're not just setting up a situation in which 911 doesn't work. They assume that the cops will be corrupt. They assume that they will always be in cahoots with the bad guy. Best example of this is a fellow who makes um, films and comic books and all that that are unalloyably evil from beginning to end, and that's Frank Miller. The 300 series, the Sin, Sin City series, always preaching, give up, it's hopeless. And uh, a fellow who's far more subtle about this, but the message is always still the same, and that's Orson Scott Card, whose stories always involve letting civilization fail, 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 and then reluctantly a sad, reluctant demigod has to step in and take over and rule us from above for our own good because democracy never works. Now, there are also films that, and a lot of books too, that celebrate civilization. One tasty little fun, insignificant film recently was, was the Walter Mitty film. But there was a little bit of joy in the background that civilization is adapting. Monuments Men falls into the category of World War II. There were definitely reasons for peril. Good guys fighting on a lawyer of evil. Civilization was giving them the means they need in order to help keep civilization up with it by protecting its art, for example. One filmmaker who is always on this side of the balance is Steven Spielberg. Yes, his heroes are always in peril and he does a very good job at all the standard arcs for a, a Jeopardy situation, lots and lots of tension and all that. But what it comes down to is Steven Spielberg will never, ever show a bad Western civilization. He's just too grateful because that civilization gave him everything and made him capable of making these wonderful movies and having a real fun life. A fellow who does the opposite, who's one of Spielberg's friends, is George Lucas. And in all of the Star Wars films, civilization is useless, completely hopeless. Name for me one moment in which the Republic, or even the Jedi Council for that matter, make one correct decision or do anything right. Now, other examples that celebrate civilization while keeping their heroes in peril, for instance, the Europa Report and Mission to Mars. Lots of peril, stuff has happened, but civilization has been there for them. 
It's just too far away. Iron Man. Mm, yeah, yeah, civilization is in there. Deep Impact. Very much. Spider-Man movies. I've, you know, said this again. <laughs> They're not great films. Not great cinema. But I love how in every Spider-Man film, Spider-Man spends 90% of the film saving New Yorkers, but there's always a tasty moment when New Yorkers stand up for and save Spider-Man. That's sweet. That's nice. And, and very rare. Very rare. And I think probably the best example of celebrating civilization that we've seen recently was um, Her, a lovely, tasty movie in which civilization was work working fine. But there are problems among the lovers. Um, an example is Lucy, a recent film. And this brings us into a final category. And that is where you create Jeopardy despite there being a decent civilization. In Lucy, Luc Besson will never betray us. He's like Spielberg in that regard. Mm, kind of fluffy films he could do with some more science advisors. But always fun and always good nature and always believing in us. Other examples of uh, Jeopardy, despite there being a civilization in the background, Gravity. All the Star Trek films. A, a tasty one from the 1980s that I always liked because of this reason, above all. Alien Nation, the Lego movie. So we've seen there's a spectrum. What category tends to dominate? The assumption that civilization is useless. That's what you're going to see most of the time because it's easier to get your heroes into jeopardy and just the plot writes itself. If you assume there aren't skilled professionals or there aren't institutions, some of them may be corrupt, target the corrupt ones, but maybe some others that might help you. Corporations, maybe they're not all evil. Your neighbors, maybe they're not all sheep. Why have I gone into this rant? Because in the long run, this is poisonous. It's feeding into our tendency toward cynicism and assuming that we live in a crappy civilization. When in fact, all the statistics on violence, poverty, and all the other matters, science, they all indicate that it's a good one and it's getting better. And it's self-critical and we use the movies to criticize ourselves. But we can do that without spreading the assumption that everything's bad. And with that, I leave you with one more criterion on which you can judge movies. It's highfalutin, but you know what? Let's start including this one. Because if we do, it might affect the marketplace. And it might mean that those tales that encourage us, that that trait joins drama, adventure, great characters, and all these other wonderful, necessary traits as one more that gets rewarded and the directors and the authors think about, as I hope you'll think about it.